It's not that you are not working hard, but you just feel like there are too many things to do in a day. You feel like you don't have enough time. Even if you get a lot of things done, but you still feel like it's not enough. In this video, we will go through three practices I do in a day-to-day -day basis that help me to be more mindful with my time. If you're new here, my name is Wen Kai. I'm a recent graduate from University of Alberta, studying psychology and sociology. For the past three years, I've worked closely with students from all over the world and helped them to achieve academic success and personal growth. What does your ideal day look like? Just like budgeting, we first need to know where our time goes. This idea comes from author Brian Holiday. It is essential to consciously aware of what truly matters to you and how do you fit those things into your day. A life, Seneca says, is made up of days. Annie Dillard said, how we spend our lives is of course how we spend our days. And so I have to look at each opportunity then that comes along any day and ask myself, is it getting me closer or further away from the kind of life I want to lead and the kind of person that I want to be? That is where making daily schedule and to-do lists come into place. First, what are the three most essential things I want to accomplish today? Second, when is the start and finish of my day? Although things wouldn't always go as planned, it is still a great guidance to understand what are the tasks that truly matter to you and how can you work towards your goal in a daily basis. Study hard, study smart. Reduce unnecessary workload is another simple and effective way to create more time in your day. There are three types of courses in university, information-based, project-based, and practice-based. The example for information-based would be psychology, sociology, or any other social science, especially during your first and second year. Those are the courses that require a lot of memorization and note-taking techniques. Project space would be the courses do not focus heavily on your midterms or final exams, but your final project, such as your essays, research proposal, and reports. This type of course usually involves a lot of self-studying, such as doing your own research, doing a lot of reading, and group discussion. Last but not least would be the practice-based courses. Those are the courses that involve a lot of repetitions, doing practice questions, and hands-on experience. The example would be statistics, mathematics, or any research-based courses. Let's say you are taking introductory psychology and information-based course. It involves two midterms and one final. It would be wise to focus more on how to take notes more efficiently during a class and how do you organize your notes after class. And last but not least, memorize all of those class materials, then only focus on doing practice questions, etc. Vice versa, you should spend less time on memorizing things if your course is more like a project based. You focus on doing your own research and essays. By adjusting approach to different courses, we can spend less time studying and get better grades. Just like going to the gym. For those of you who always feel like you are short on time or you're having a hard time engage of your schoolwork, it might be the early sign of burning out. Like going to the gym, we should schedule each day of the week to work on different things. Here I will recommend what I call 3-2-2 rule. 3 days to focus on your major, 2 days to focus on your minor and extracurricular, and 2 days to deload. Each day should have a specific theme and go. Being mindful of our time doesn't necessarily mean we should use every single minute of our day and just keep doing things one thing and another. Finding the balance between gain and recovery is the key to be more productive in the long run. It's not a race of who getting more things done, it's about how you get it done. 